Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm sorry that I've only been posting once a week. I've been traveling and working a lot and it's all going to make sense in a couple of months time what I've been working on. But for now, I'm just going to be talking about mixing and producing. Specifically, should you mix while you're producing or should you do all your production first and then mix a lot later? I've had hundreds and hundreds of comments and questions and emails this year where people, uh, beginners, are talking about um, their experiences. They, they start something and they're trying too hard to really make it sound good and they're tweaking their EQ and compression for too long and then somewhere along the, the way, you know, they run out of time in the day or they run out of motivation and it, it just it all gets lost on them and it's re it's real shame and what i've noticed is that this isn't just an isolated experience this seems to be happening to thousands and thousands of people and it's because a lot of us in audio are perfectionists in one way or another like we really want it to sound good and it's really admirable that so many of you are like that but what it does is it causes us to miss the bigger picture sometimes we spend a long time polishing one little piece of the puzzle instead of just trying to fit all the puzzle pieces together. So instead of, you know, working on the whole arrangement and the transitions and the melodies and chords, we, we can just hone in on like a snare drum and tweak it to death and EQ it until we think it's perfect, but we just waste too much time on it and it means that we really miss the bigger picture and we're not having as much fun. I think the reason we do this is because we're perfectionists, but also we see the big dog producers and big mixing engineers doing really complicated stuff very quickly. And we sometimes forget that you know, they've had decades to develop that workflow. So one of the biggest mistakes I made when I started was, you know, immediately load up lots of plugins and, and try to emulate what they were doing. But really, when I started to get compression on a kick drum really working well would just take me way too long and it probably wouldn't sound too good. Whereas right now, loading up a compressor and, and getting it into a good zone doesn't take me very long. It could take a few seconds, could take a few minutes, and that's okay for my workflow. But a couple of years ago, getting that compressor to work might have honestly taken me like 20 minutes and I would have had to go back and forth and back and forth. Something that I've been trying to do that I think has been working for me is to separate my sessions into different types of sessions. So I have certain sessions where I do sound design and I create samples. And this might not seem as fun as producing, but most of us love tweaking synthesizers. You know, you just pick a synthesizer and then pick a sound and then just work towards creating it. For instance, with the Sounds Of series that I'm doing, I picked a synthesizer, Serum, I picked a song, 21 Pilots, My Blood, and I just work to try and recreate that sound, even if you don't get it perfectly in, in the right ballpark. You're going to learn a lot of stuff along the way. There's a good channel I'd recommend called Synth Hacker that I'm going to link in the description, just specifically for synthesis, I find it really helpful. But you can do the same with your sound design, your actual musical practice, your chords and your scales, and also your sample sessions where you can develop sort of, you know, kick drums, snare drums, hi-hats, kits, put them all together the way you like it. Then I have other sessions where I actually do the bulk of my production, and when I hit these sessions, I already have loads of samples and loads of sounds that I already like, that I know work well together. And of course, in those sessions, I always discover and create loads of new sounds and samples as well, and there's so much joy in doing that but I'm, I don't start with such a blank canvas. I already have good stuff to work with. Whilst I'm doing those production sessions, I try not to get bogged down in the mixing too much. And I think this is made worse by the fact that I do stuff like this. So on the screen here, I have the bass processing chain from the My Blood uh, video that I made. When I load this up, this is all you guys see. Uh, saturation, loads of compression, more saturation, EQ, uh, a exciter, imager, and an amplifier. Then you guys probably think, oh, when I use a bass, I better load up all of that complicated stuff too. But what I tend to miss out is by saying, look, when I started this bass, I didn't have this on or this or this. The only thing I started with was this EQ and a tiny bit of saturation. That was the only thing that I had on that entire chain just to move it forward. I knew that I would come back to it and add more stuff later, but that's all it needed in the moment for me to carry on, work on the drums, work on the synths, and get the bigger picture. If I just focused on the bass, I might have run out of time in the day. Everybody's busy, we've all got stuff to do, we've got pets to look after, people to care for, food to cook, we have to go to sleep at some point, so there's only so many hours in a day, and sometimes getting the whole arrangement out can just make you feel like you've accomplished a lot more. Now, everybody's different, so I'm not trying to tell anyone how to work. Uh, everybody's workflow is gonna be so different, and, and that's natural. And there's also, you know, going to be extremely talented people that can do all of it at the same time and whatnot. So I'm not trying to tell people how to live. But at the same time, I think breaking it up into these sessions makes a lot of sense for the kind of like 
normal people like me out there who we're doing it as we're trying to do it as a job and as a hobby and we enjoy it and we want to have fun doing it and we want to feel like we're getting better at it and improving. One of the things that led me to this workflow as well, um, and some of you know that I got a guitar uh, about six or seven months ago and I've been trying to learn guitar and uh, I learned the hard way that you have to have your practice sessions where you learn scales and chords and all of that stuff and then you have your recording sessions and your performance sessions I can't uh, do effective practice sessions just when I'm sitting in front of a microphone trying to record guitar. There's certain techniques that I struggled with. Playing eighth notes and sixteenth notes that I it really locked into tempo. Playing bar chords every time perfectly. There's no point trying to practice that five minutes before recording. It makes me feel crushed. It makes me feel like a really bad guitarist. Whereas when I set aside 15 minutes, 20 minutes to practice those skills on their own, it means that when I come into doing that recording session, I'm a lot more prepared. And I know that everything I'm saying probably seems really self-explanatory to a lot of people, but I think sometimes in the moment we can all uh, forget it. I know that I certainly do, and I can dive into a detail that's not, not too important too soon. So that's really the, the, the main point of this video, is to just take a look at your workflow and try to identify times when you're not really focusing on what's important and you might be sort of killing the vibe or the energy or the mood or whatever you want to call it. And, and just to try and address that so that you can keep enjoying it, keep having fun and keep improving more than anything else. I also just wanted to say, like I mentioned at the start of the video, I am working on some really big stuff and I'm sorry that I've cut my videos down to once a week, uh, but I think, it's, I think it's for the better because it means that I can put out much higher quality videos uh, rather than just trying to, um, trying to struggle to find the time to make sort of a, a less well-produced video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.